All right, everybody, we got uh, Michael Parsons with us. Um, we'll start with questions. Um, let's start with Greg Pickle with Penn Live. Go ahead, Greg. Hi, Micah. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Hey, how did the first workout go today? And what's it like just to be back on campus and in the weight room and around your teammates again? Uh, I just, I, I'm coming in phase two. Um, I just knew it would be like my last week at home. I wanted to spend Father's Day with my son and, um, you know, spend it with my father for the last time uh, before I headed back to campus. So I'm going to come back next Monday. Next question is Allie Berube, ABC 27, Harrisburg. Hey, Micah, how's it going? This, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Um, so, obviously, it's been a crazy time for everyone. Um, but I want to ask you, you know, what's kept you motivated these last couple months to, you know, keep working out, keep doing what you got to do to make sure you're ready for this fall? Honestly, just, you know, keeping my mind, hoping that we're going to come back to the season. Uh, just putting the work in so I could get the results that I want this year. And, you know, uh, just thinking about my family, they were extra motivation, uh, seeing what we were going through. You know, mom going through struggles, father going through struggles, obviously, with COVID. So, you know, it was just extra fuel for me, and I was just able to uh, just keep going. And then also, you know, some of the guys will send videos to each other, at each other on social media, saying what we're doing today. Uh, so pushing each other from afar. So, you know. Uh, from the uh, football team and my family. They gave me all the support and motivation I needed to get through it these next, uh, these couple months. Our next question is Mark Brennan, Fight on State. Hey, Micah. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. I, I wonder if you've been able to identify some areas where you think you could get even better from last year. We haven't really talked to you since the bowl game. What are some of the things that maybe you're focused on? Um, I just say just uh, complete my game, uh, you know, uh, cleaning up all the things I'm good at. You can always get better at everything you do. So I just say get better at uh, what I already do now. You know, um, I'm going to just continue to get better at my, my strengths and I'm going to continue to get better at my weaknesses. Uh, I say, sheesh, I don't know. I can't give you no bad stuff. You know, people might see it and be like, oh, we're going to target that. So. I'm going to just say, I'm going to just clean up, uh, you know, my mental side of the game, I would say. Next question is Peter Terpstra, WTAJ. Hey, Micah. Uh, I saw a video not too long ago. I don't know. Days have been running together. You were working out with some Penn State wrestlers, carrying some logs and doing some stuff. What was – what was some stuff that you were doing in the time away uh, to stay in shape? And uh, how was that time for you? Uh, I was doing uh, everything with the wrestling team. I actually trained with both a little bit with some MMA stuff. Um, you know, uh, I was doing running, field work, running hills. I was doing anything I could think of, anything that seemed fun or challenging for me. Uh, I was doing it, you know, just to, as a competitor and just, you know, I just knew it would make me better, you know. I was actually wrestling a little bit with Bo again this off season, and you know, it was just some fun stuff, you know. Uh, it was interesting. Next question is Audrey Snyder, the Athletic. Hey, Micah, thanks for your time today. Um, you mentioned your family. Um, are they okay throughout all of this? Um, yeah. And how did they kind of determine who was going to come back to campus when? Uh, you know, they, they were okay. Um, wait, what was the second question? How did Penn State determine who was going to come back in phase one versus phase two? Or like um, the honestly, side did or? Um, it was like a mutual thing. If you said that she wanted to come back in phase one, you could, um, you know, they're only a week apart. Um, they tried to bring most of the scholarship guys back. Some decided to stay depending on your situation. Um, but you know, my family was is doing well. Uh, they are getting through it. Next question is Ben Jones, StateCollege.com. Hey, Micah, I I know before Saquon's junior year, you could kind of sense that this was his moment, and kind of it feels like going into your junior year that this sort of feels like your moment. Does that does it feel that way for you? Does this season feel different? aside from all the things that are different about, you know, what's going on this offseason? 
Uh, no, nah, not really, man. Like, um, you know, uh, I'm just a person that just like, uh, I just play the game and just so happen to be good at it, you know. So I just take every, I just take every day for what it is. Um, go out there and just give my a hundred percent, do what I do best. Um, there's no more pressure to it. I feel like when you add pressure and you add all those uh, other factors, it can alter how you play and perform. I just don't want to go out there and have fun with the game, you know. And that's what it's about, just going out there and have fun and being dominant about it. Um, there ain't nothing more to it than, you know, just going out there and trying to win championships this year. And that's all it is. You know, I'm just trying to win championships this year. And if it's my year, it's my year, you know. Next question is Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Hey, Micah, great to hear from you today. Thanks for the time. Um, your days at linebacker in, at Penn State have quickly gone from being a first-year starter to the only returning starter. Can you kind of give us a scouting report on that linebacker room right now and maybe a younger guy like Lance Dixon, Brandon Smith, who we haven't seen a lot of yet, where you feel like their careers are headed? Um, Brandon Smith or Lance, Dancer, like Lance Dixon are going to have a chance to be a starter this year, and so is Jesse Lucetta and Ellis Brooks. Um, it's going to be a crazy competitive room this summer, this camp. Um, I personally can't wait to see who's going to win the jobs out of them four. Um, all of them are hardworking guys that's going to come in and really compete for the jobs that they want. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, um, Ellis and Jesse are in the battle and Lance and Brandon are in the battle over at Sam linebacker. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, um, they all have different uh, edges, uh, what they're good at, and uh, they just got to use it to their strengths and go 100% in camp and uh, win the job. Our next question is Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Micah, being the, uh, the veteran guy now, experience-wise, in that position, I, it, it usually comes with a, a bigger leadership role. Um, do you feel excited for that, ready for that? And, and is there a challenge with not trying to change too much of how you approach things in, in that regard? Yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's always a challenge when you're stepping into a bigger role. Uh, I was just telling Ellis this the other day when we were talking, I said it's going to be completely different. I went from the guy that never said anything to the guy that probably got to speak up more, you know. Um, I got to go outside of my comfort zone a little bit and speak up more and try to be that guy for the younger guys. And, you know, uh, it's going to be a challenging year for me. But, you know, I think it, it it can't do nothing but help me grow. You know, it's a it's a challenge that I got to be willing to accept and a challenge that I got to be willing to grow into to do what we want to do this year. So um, it's something that I'm really looking forward to and I'm excited about. Joel Smith, CBS 21. Joel, are you able to unmute yourself? Does that work? Hello? There you go. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, Mike, I want to talk about social justice a little bit. I know that you've been looking online and making comments sometimes about what's been going on. you're echoing a little bit. All right, let me kill one of those. I think you, I think it's dead in there. No, I'm still hearing it. Hold on. Why don't you come back to me? I'm going to work on that. I'll come back to you, Joel. Next question is Mike Gross, Lancaster news, Newspapers. Uh, hold on, Mike. Let me unmute you. Go ahead. Am I here? Yep, you're good. Hear me? Yep. You there, Mike? We'll come back to Mike. Let's next okay. up is Oh, you there, Mike? Hi, Mike. Hey. Uh, um Hey Mike, you're cutting out. I'm here. Cut... Yeah, you hear me? You're cutting yeah. out. You hear me? Yeah, we got you, you now. Anybody? Okay. Go okay. You got me? Okay. Micah, you heard me? Yep. Okay. Uh, Micah, uh, 
couple months ago when we talked to James, he said he guessed that maybe about 10% of the team might opt to not come back when, the, when, the, when, the, when you first come back from the pandemic. Uh, do you know if any of your, any of your teammates have decided not to come back? And have you had to fill out some kind of paperwork, a waiver or something like that, the way we've heard that the Ohio State players had to? I, I didn't hear the last end of that question. We'll come back. We'll come back to Mike. Uh, we'll check on Mike in a little bit. Uh, Neil Riddell, Altoona Mirror. Not hear me? Yep. I'm there. Yeah, thank you. I'm wondering, okay. Mike, uh, a little bit more on the uh, Donnie's question about being a leader. Uh, who are the guys that you've looked up to? And have you talked to any of the past players about what it's like to step into that leadership role? Um, a person I looked up to in the linebacker room was, uh, Jan. Um, and it wasn't a sense of, uh, how he played, but, you know, how he carried himself every day and how he came, he approached the game the right way. He might not have been the most athletic guy, but his mental and how he approached the game and his study of the game and helping me understand the game was just, like, off the charts. Um, it, Jan helped me a lot while I was on the field. He helped me a lot off the field, in the film room, helped me understand, like, you know, systems, why they're running this, what they were running this. So um, that was always a person I looked up to. And I've talked to Cam Brown recently. And, you know, I've talked to Saquon recently. And I've talked to Trace McSorley um, after he just had left. And he told me going into my sophomore year, that I was going to break out and I had to start becoming a leader and things like that. And I've talked to him recently um, and guys like that. And just like, um, just learning how to be that guy that everyone looks up to and learning uh, what it takes and what do you have to give up to be that guy? You have to give up wanting to have fun all the time and being serious and have to change in your approach. So just those type of leadership qualities that you want to see in a person is um, just kind of important and how they explained it to me. Our next question is John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Hey, Mike, uh, how much harder has it been to make that transition to the leadership role when you're not with your teammates, when everything's over a video conference and you don't actually get to see those guys? Um, it makes everything so much harder because, you know, you don't know who's really paying attention. You don't, you, you don't know who's really working out as hard as they possibly can. You don't know any of those things. So um, it's hard to really monitor, but um, we get this chance to come back and get in the flow of things during these voluntary workouts, and we're just going to go from there. You know, we can't control um, what happened with this pandemic. We can't control what's been going on in the world right now, but we can't control – how we come back after this pandemic and how we move forward. So we're going to control the things that we control now, and we're going to get better from it. Our next question is Nubias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Two quick things. Oh, two quick things. One, what was your son's name? And then the other part was how did the news that the – Guys were coming back, the students were able to come back to campus on August 24th, uh, make you feel just kind of seeing that it'll be somewhat like normal on campus. Uh, my son's name is Malcolm Floyd Ham Parsons. Um, uh, and, you know, just hearing that we're coming back, that's like a relief because, you know, um, you want to play in front of the fans, like, and you want to do all those type of things, and you want to have that type of environment. You know, it's not as – fun taking these class over zoom meetings online you kind of want to be interactive it's harder to get your one-on-ones with the teachers and communicate things that you don't understand but um it so hearing that news is is a relief you know i hope that things could go back to normal and we're just taking the next step forward to go back to normal um i don't think no one likes this uh pandemic and you know we're going to keep moving in the right direction hopefully and Hopefully, 
by the time the season comes, Beaver Stadium is going to be full and packed. Our next question is Mark Wogenrich, sportsillustrated.com. You there, Mark? We'll come back to Mark. Uh, next question is John Petishnock, happyvalley.com. Hey, Mike, I appreciate your time today and hope you're doing well. Hey, you talked about pressure earlier. I, I wanted to ask, what is your definition of pressure? And do you feel pressure for the team to make the playoffs this season? Uh, it's no pressure, you know. Um, I feel like what you put in this off season, what you put in every day in practice, um, when you do those things and the work that you put in, there, there's really no pressure. It's just going out there and performing. Um, like, you know what you're capable of. You know what you could do. So, really, what is the pressure? Uh, you could put your own pressure, you know, your own goals on yourself, but there's no pressure on us making the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like, it's either we do what we got to do or we don't. It, it's real simple. And, you know, every week I know I'm going to go 110% every day and I know when I whether I win or lose I can say like I did everything I possibly can to win the game or you know got better so I want to put no pressure on myself to do anything because the work's going to speak for itself and I tell all my guys in the weight room um, you just got to speak it into existence everything that you put in the air you speak it into existence last year I wrote down my goals and most of my goals came true. Um, this year, I'm going to write down my goals, and it's going to come true. Just like this offseason, when we came in after break, I said, I'm going to clean 375 power clean. And I said, the proof's in the pudding. Every day I came in, I made sure I got – I was doing everything I had to do, the extra. And what came that day, when it was testing day, I threw a 375 because I said, the proof's in the pudding. I told you I was going to do this before I even did it. So, literally, you do everything you got to do every day to get there, and you're going to make it happen. So, once the season comes and we get back to working, we're going to do everything we're going to have to do, and we're going to make it happen, and we're going to head in the direction to make the playoffs and hopefully go more. Evan Patrick, Daily Collegian. Hey, my guy's going. Good. Um, so, last year with – how often you guys at the linebacking core were able to kind of get different guys on the field and get playing time. You're sometimes alternating every possession with the different groups of guys. Uh, coming into this season now where those guys who were behind you on the depth chart are stepping up into bigger roles, how valuable was it to kind of have all those different guys playing last year? And do you see that trend continuing into this year? Oh, yeah, a bunch of guys that, had, that didn't play last year or had limited reps are going to play this year. Um, last year was hard and hard with basically three returning players, but we still were able to rotate in games that we could. And this year, two spots is open. And I'm pretty sure the first four games of the season, there's going to be a lot of rotation, a lot of opportunities for a lot of guys to get in there and play. And I always tell people, all it takes is one opportunity to prove yourself. i never forget, I wasn't a starter. I really wasn't playing a lot. I had one game, I had one opportunity to go in there and do what I had to do, and I started getting more and more reps. All you need is an opportunity, and what I'm going to teach you guys is to maximize every opportunity you get because you probably, and at this level, you get one chance, or at any level, you get one opportunity to do what you have to do, and you don't want to miss out. It's rare that you get multiple opportunities and, you know, just maximizing every one, and I think a lot of these guys, that, you know, I help recruit, and a lot of guys that was here last year, I know what they're going to bring to the table, and they're going to maximize every opportunity they get this year. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record. Hi, Micah. Um, Training-wise, physically, how do you view yourself right now coming out of the pandemic, getting ready to head back to campus, as opposed to if you would have been up there? Is there any way do you think somehow – you're any better for doing what you've been doing the last three months? Um, it's a hard question because, like, you know, obviously I didn't 
have that same workload I would have working with Coach Deej. And, you know, he's one of the best strength coaches around for years. Um, but, you know, as of right now, I think my body feels good. I think I'm weighing what I want to weigh. Um, I think I'm moving the way I want to move. I've been helping, working on my transitions. Um, I still, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm not in Coach D shape. I wouldn't say I'm in Coach D shape because his shape is completely different from mine. But I'm in a shape when I come back that I won't die, I would say. And I think uh, my body feels good going back. We got time for a couple more. Nate Bauer, Blue Light Illustrated. Hey, Micah. Um, if you can clarify for me, had you ever taken any reps at linebacker at all in high school? Um, and if you can go back to when, when you started at the position at Penn State, uh, how much do you feel like your understanding of the position has evolved, um, you know, over the last couple of years? Um, I, I mean, I used to have fun with them, like, hey, coach, like, let me go out there and play linebacker. So I, I would say I took some reps, but they were very, very limited because um, obviously most – all my film were – yeah, all my films at defensive end pretty much, except for maybe a few clips where they had a package where I go to linebacker just to blitz, like a nickel package or something like that. Um, but other than that, like, uh, I would say my game is truly did evolve. Uh, I was of somebody that didn't know anything. I would say my first spring ball, I was just out there fishing the water. Uh, I was just clueless. I was just out there running around trying to make plays. And we'd go look at him like, Coach, why did you guys like, Coach, I was just trying to make a play. And then once he helped me figure out how to fit in the system and do what I had to do, I think that's when I started to get better and better. But um, now I'm, I have more understanding of the game and I have a way of finding my way to the ball the right way and fitting in the system. So, you know, all positive things uh, going forward with how I evolved and my understanding of the game and the defense that we run. We have time for one more question. Mark Wogenrich, are you there? Mark Wogenrich, are you there? All right, we'll go to Joel Smith. Go ahead, Joel. All right, thanks a lot. Can you hear me this time? Yes. yes. Great. Mike, I want to talk about something a little more serious. I know on social media you've been uh, talking about some social justice issues. A lot of people are talking about that. As a leader of the team, if some people came up to you and said uh, they wanted to know your opinions on this, we want to be together on this, what do you think is important for people to know? Um, uh, uh, you know, there's always, you know, conversations like that that come up. And as I always tell people, it it can be an individual thing. It has to, everyone has to be together because everyone has to understand the magnitude and how far you want to go with this. And um, if you want to come and raise awareness and do it, then do it together. And uh, the fact that you bring a lot of unity in the, uh, unity with it, and that's powerful. And, you know, being together as a team is powerful. It'll help you grow together, things like that. Um, I don't really say too much on social injustices because uh, we all know what's going on. We're all aware of the injustices that goes around. Um, it's not something that uh, everyone needs to speak on because we all know. But, you know, it's just something that it's the world that we live in. And, you know, we got to keep striving to make a change and differences in the people around us. You know, I don't – and I think that's another reason why I go so hard is, you know, I don't want my son to have the same life that I had growing up. You know, I, I faced challenges throughout my life, and, you know, I want him to see something different, you know. And I think that's what, as parents and adults, and, you know, as we get older, we all want to strive to give our sons and – our kids' sons a better life for something different than we had. So, you know, um, I think that's the goal, and we want to keep moving that our generations are happy and living the life peacefully with love and joy. So um, that's it. Appreciate it. Thanks.
All right. Thank you, Micah. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today.